What's up, everyone? Welcome to Mountainside Tabletop. We are extremely excited to be back with some Warcry on the channel, finally. We both really love Warcry, and we've been seeing a lot of comments requesting more of it. Uh, we recently did a poll on our Patreon and got a lot of love for Warcry. So we're back, and we're going to bring it back to be a bit more of our rotation. So today, I'm really excited. I finally have a new warband. It's been a while since I've painted one up. I'm playing the Gloomspite Gits, based around one of the Underworlds warbands, uh, whose name I can't remember at the moment, but it'll be on screen. Uh, and so my team is made up of the operatives you see below and then one Ale Guzzler Gargant, uh, which is going to be so much fun. I mean, I, this is what I love about Warcry. There's so much flexibility in list building. Uh, you can bring a ton of crazy stuff and it has lots of great interactions. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting this huge model on the table and, uh, you know, killing some stuff and tanking some damage. Yeah. So yeah, Victor told me that he printed this Gargant off. It looks so good. and. I was horrified yeah because i looked at his stats and i'm like dude 45 health how am i gonna chew through that yeah. this thing's just gonna destroy me four eight damage four attacks like i'm screwed however one fun thing for me is that because there's a monster in the game my fighters get access to the monster hunting abilities like they look super fun i can really mess this guy up for the whole game yeah you know in battle round one, I can go in there and I can poke his eyes out. He's going to be attacking with one less die the rest of the game. Like, that's massive. That's huge. There's so much stuff I can do to try and slow him down, make him less effective. And in addition to all that, he has damage brackets. So it's not all or nothing. It's not like I take him off the board, deal 45 points of damage or nothing happens. You know, about every 10 damage or so, I'm making his movement worse and I'm making his damage worse. So there is a point to actually dealing damage to this thing, even if I think I'm not going to kill it. And he's only toughness four, which means he will take some wounds. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? I'm excited to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you've seen them here on the channel once before. I've got my blood-covered royal beast flayers. Say that five times fast. Uh, we had the patrons vote which team I should bring back, and it was a tie between these guys and the unmade, both of uh, my teams covered in blood. But these guys had the most <laughs> yeah. blood, and they've only been on the channel once, so I decided to bring them back. I'm really excited to get to try them out and try some of their abilities that I didn't get to use last time because they died too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I basically got the standard loadout straight out of the box. Just, you know, it is what it is. It's a bespoke warband. I haven't brought in any allies or anything weird, but they're super fun to play. I'm excited to get them on the channel again, and I'm excited to spray some blood everywhere. So I really enjoy playing against this team because it doesn't feel like there's a lot of surprises. Yeah. Um, like, you know what is coming at you, and it's just about dealing with it. But I think the biggest threat against my team specifically is these hounds. They have so much movement mm -hmm. and uh, they do a lot of damage, you know? And so hopefully I'm able to kind of mitigate that by spreading out if I have to. And luckily they don't have access to the monster fighting abilities because that, yeah. uh, that would really screw me up. So yeah, we'll see. I know what I have to look out for, but the rest is just, you know, withstand the tide of whatever they are. Yeah. In the past, we've pulled some Warcry victory conditions and deployments that have been really one-sided. And so to address that, we're trying a new style where we pull three of each card and then we each get a chance to veto one of them. Uh, the idea here being that we can both at least uh, kind of mitigate worst case scenario. So first, we roll for attacker and defender, which I win and choose to be the attacker. Next, uh, we lay out our terrain with this card and we get the deployment Closing Jaws. Brad won this roll off and chose to be the red side. For victory condition, we ended up with Brutal Cull, and our twist today is Harrowing Hunger. I don't love this, but the other options were also pretty bad, so I'm gonna have to live with this. I think Victor's probably gonna be getting a lot of free wounds off on me, but uh, maybe I'll get some on him too.
In battle round one, we start off by rolling our initiative dice. Both Victor and I end up with one set of doubles and the rest singles. Victor opts to change his double fives to triple fives with his wild die, and I'm going to do the same with my fours. Then Vic, you're up. All right, well, with the first activation of the game, I'm going to activate the biggest operative on the field. So I'm going to move my Gargant and then use my triple fives on Dragon Maul. I'm going to pull the Squire towards me, uh, dealing three damage for each four up here. And I miss them all, so all I've done is brought someone that can now attack me. All right, well, I'm going to go right away with this Squire. Uh, I'm going to burn my triples here on Go for the Eyes. Then I'll attack the Gargant. I get the roll I need, so that's three damage through, and the Gargant's attack characteristic is going to be nerfed from four to three for the rest of the game. That's one less attack die for every attack for the rest of the game. That's huge, man. Well, my Gargant's going to do his second action now to attack that Squire. I'm hitting on threes, but uh, I've only got three attacks now. Unfortunately, uh, only eight damage goes through, and the Squire stays alive. All right, one of my trackers here now is just going to double move and hide around the top of the board here. All right, well, my Gargan's last action, I'm gonna attack the Squire and finally get the kill. Okay, my last activation, my other tracker is gonna move up just next to the other tracker and hide. All right, well, with the last two activations of the turn, Snorbo the Spore and Pointy Burke are just gonna scuttle on over uh, to get to a bit of a better position for the next turn. All right, well, that's the end of the first battle round. Not much has happened so far. Uh, you did get one kill, but I've like really greatly reduced the effectiveness of your biggest unit. So yeah. I'm kind of not too unhappy about that exchange. <laughs> no, and you know, neither of us have broken any battle groups. So it's still, uh, still an empty scoreboard and um, could get bad. All right, well, top of battle round two and we roll off for initiative. Brad gets uh, triple threes, and I get a couple sets of doubles. He's going to turn his triples into a quad, and I'm going to make a triple six out of mine for the number of the beast. All right, well, I don't get to take advantage of quads very often. and They seem uh, pretty hard to come by, but I'm going to make the most of it right now. So I'm going to go with my hound over here first. I'm going to use my quads for rampage to make a bonus move, and they have a seven inch move. So that free move will get me all the way up in striking range of the Gargan. Then I'll be making three attacks here, hitting on fours. First attack is absolutely nuts. Oh man. Nuts. <laughs> Second attack is also pretty good and not a bad third attack either. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty incredible, Victor. I was planning on just using the Hound here to kind of tie up the Gargan. And I figured while I was there, may as well make some attacks, maybe bracket you to make you less effective. But I've already taken out 24 of your 45 wounds. This is going to take you down two brackets immediately. Your movement goes from six to four and your damage goes from four, eight to three, six. Like I was just going to ignore this guy and take out the little guys. But with a first attack like that, I might just try and target down your Gargan. Yeah, he's a whole battle group. Crazy. Okay, well, I'm going to activate uh, one of these guys over here. I'm going to do Skulko and Pronk, which is my one uh, ranged attack. I'm going to take a shot at the tracker closest to me. Unfortunately, the first one only does one damage, and the second attack only does two more. This thing really spikes on crits, and I did not roll one. All right, well, I'm going to go with that same tracker that just took damage. I'm going to double move to the middle of the board and just chill here for now. My Gargant is going to activate now and attack this dog. Hitting on threes here, I get a miss, so that's only six damage. Too bad. Well, I'm going to go with the other dog that hasn't gone yet. I'm going to double move to tie up the Gargant again and also Mr. Pointy over here. Well, I'm going to use uh, what is becoming my favorite ability in the game. Spend my triple sixes on Drag and Maul to grab that dog away from Pointy and bring him over to this other one. Then I'm gonna roll six dice, doing three damage on each four up, and I do uh, pretty well here, doing 12 damage. Next, I'm gonna attack the healthier of the two dogs, uh, doing nine damage to him, but thanks to the twist, I do two more damage to the one that I just dragged over here, bringing him down to four HP. All right, I have a tracker over here. I'm gonna just move toward the middle of the board, chilling around all the other action here. All right, my Gargant will do his last action of the turn to attack one of these dogs. Luckily, I get the kill here, and then thanks to the twist, the other one is all the way down to 1 HP. This member of the 1 HP gang is brought to you by Quinn Holiday. Thanks, Quinn Holiday. I'm gonna go with my leader now. 
I'm just gonna double move and get close to the Gargan. I know this is risky, but I wanna set up to finish off the Gargan, hopefully next turn. Okay, well, I'm gonna activate uh, Grink Rock here and just move up to get in position, but stay hidden in case I need to run away. And then uh, Grib the Wobbly Lance is gonna move up to beside him. Yeah, I'm out of guys. So first, uh, Snorbo the Spore will move up and use his uh, ranged mushroom attack to hit this tracker. I'm hitting on fives here and unfortunately nothing goes through. And then with my last activation, uh, Pointy Burke is gonna move and then spend my remaining doubles on backstabbing mob to add one to his attacks and strength here. So I'm hitting on fours instead of fives. Still only two damage goes through and this tracker stays alive at three HP. All right, so the end of the second battle round, and man, that twist is hurting me. Yeah, that was brutal. That twist is hurting me, and also, your sixes on <laughs> Dragon Maw are just so good. That really hurts. I thought, you know, I poked your eyes out. I thought that would really reduce your damage capacity, but turns out, when you use abilities, you just don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I haven't really done much with my uh, normal attacks, but um, I'm pretty worried about how many wounds my Gargant has lost. I came into this thinking like, yeah, there's no way you're going to bring him down. I'll just like soak all the damage. Yeah. But uh, that one attack with the dog did a crazy amount of damage. It cost you a quad, but still wasn't expecting to lose him. And now I'm thinking, okay, how can I win this game and lose the Gargant? And uh, the math is getting harder. Yeah, I'm hoping I can finish him off pretty soon. Speaking of soon though, I hope you click the link in our description soon and pick up one of your own Swampland mats from Skirmish Mats. We got an affiliate link in the description, so if you want to pick up your own, you know where to go. All right, in battle round three, we make our initiative rolls. Vic rolls a double, and I've got three sets of doubles. So I'm gonna make a triple three with my wild die, and Vic makes a triple six. That gives Vic initiative, and I'm pretty sure I know what you're using those sixes uh, on. Yep. So with the first activation, no surprise here, I'm gonna activate my Gargant and use Dragon Maul on Brad's leader. Only a couple successes here doing six damage, but then I'm gonna get an attack on him and do another nine, bringing him down to five. Luckily, because of the twist here, that dog is dead. That puts that battle group below half strength, so that's one broken battle group for me. Yikes. Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna go with my leader while he's still alive. Uh, I'm gonna pop my double ones for Onslaught and then attack the Gargan twice. First attack and second attack. I mean, I was hoping for better, but the Gargan's taken 33 wounds at this point, down to 12 HP left, and that does bracket him another level at least. I don't know, I was hoping for more. <laughs> I'm gonna activate Pointy Burke and do a couple attacks on this tracker. First one, uh, I'm hitting on fives here, and only get one damage through. The second attack, luckily I roll the crit I need. Uh, that kills him, and so that breaks another battle group. I'm gonna go with my tracker here. I'm gonna move down to Snorbo, and then make an attack. Unfortunately, Vic's Warband has a great reaction. Up to two of my crits are gonna only deal normal damage, and the damage for this tracker is weighted pretty heavily toward crits. Anyway, I'll do what I can. I'm hitting on fives, <laughs> and I get one damage through, so this guy has five health left. All right, my Gargant will use another one of his actions to attack Brad's leader. Hitting on threes here. Only three damage through. Uh, so I can't believe it, the leader is still alive. Okay, I got some plays here with my Baron. I'm gonna activate him here and immediately use my triple threes on a double ability, kind of sad, but still worth it. I'm gonna use it on Sound the Hunt. This is gonna let both squires nearby move three inches and that's gonna let them get into range to actually make an attack later this turn. So pretty worth it, I think. Then I will double move up and start surrounding this Gargant. Okay, well now I'm gonna activate Grib. He's got a pretty great move here, and so I can get all the way into range and attack the tracker. Unfortunately, somehow I don't kill him and he's still alive. Okay, my squire over here is just gonna move up and then I'll attack the Gargant. I'm gonna pop Onslaught for an extra attack die. I'm hitting on fives. That's five damage through, and this Gargant only has seven HP left. I'm within striking distance at this point. Okay, that was uh, a bit close for comfort. It didn't even occur to me that the Gargant could go down, but there was a chance for that roll to kill him, so I've got to use my last activation now. I'm going to attack Brad's leader, still hitting on threes. Finally, I get the kill, and uh, luckily it does two damage to all the other units touching him. 
Um, my squire over here is gonna move and then attack Mr. Spore Man. What's his name? Snorpo. Snorpo? Snorpo. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm attacking this blue guy. Uh, unfortunately, Vic uses his second action for the turn to make another reaction. Tough not once again. I'm hitting on fives. And it's only two damage through, so this little measly guy with six health, after two attacks toward him, still has three HP left. <laughs> all right, uh, I'll activate Scorp Sclump, the one with the range attack. Uh, they're going to move up and take a shot at this tracker that hasn't gone yet. With a couple crits, there is a chance I could bring him down here. Not even close, uh, and it only does two damage. All right, well, my last activation here, I have the tracker that just took two damage. He's going to double move over to the Gargan and hope that I can, you know, chip away at seven more damage quickly near the beginning of the next battle round. And yeah, okay, so at the end of battle round three, Vic has broken two of my battle groups and I've broken none. Although if I kill the Gargant with only seven HP left, that'll be one battle group broken. And the little blue Sporko guy, he has three health left. If I can kill him, that's a second battle group broken. So I think I have a pretty good shot at breaking two battle groups. Uh, my plan going forward, I have to break those two battle groups and then just keep my one final intact battle group intact until the end of the game. Honestly, this is uh, everything I love about Warcry. We're going into the fourth turn, have no idea what the outcome of the game is going to be, and uh, you know, it feels like it's just going to come down to some hilarious interaction. So, yeah. uh, looking forward to it. Hey, over here. Thanks to all the patrons of Mountainside Tabletop, especially the One HP Gangsters and Mountain Goats. Become a patron, and maybe I won't smash your house down. <laughs> So for the final battle round, we roll off for initiative. Brad ends up with double ones and double sixes, and I get double fours and double fives. He's gonna make a single three, which secures initiative, and so I might as well use my last wild die for a triple five. All right, I have a couple options here, but I think I gotta go with my Baron first. I'm worried that with Vic's first activation, between an attack and an ability, he has a good shot at killing two of my three fighters over here. The last guy on his own isn't going to kill the Gargant, and I really want to bring this Gargant down. So just to be safe, I'm going to go with my Baron. I'm going to pop Onslaught with my double ones, and then double attack the Gargant. Turn and face me, Victor. <laughs> Don't be a coward. <laughs> Alright, first attack. Alright, I just get the kill with the first Damn. attack. So I, I broke your first group, I mean he's the only guy in that group. Feels really great to get that yeah, Gargant off I the bet. table. I can't really do anything else with my other action, so I'm just going to run away and make it harder for you to kill me. Got to keep my last group intact. Alright, well, I either have to stop Brad Squire from killing one of these gits, or uh, it's going to be a tie. So I'm going to activate Grib and use my triple fives on Madcap Destruction. So let's me make a bonus move action and just deal straight five damage to the Squire. Then I'm going to make two attacks against him. The first one deals two damage, plus two damage for the twist, killing that other tracker. The second attack only deals four damage. I can't believe Brad's gonna have a chance to break my second battle group because this guy was able to stay alive with one HP. This member of the one HP gang is brought to you by Crossley 605. Thanks, Crossley 605. I gotta go with this squire. I gotta pop Onslaught with my last set of doubles. And I gotta try and get a kill on this spore guy because I'm pretty sure if I get this kill, I can tie the game. Before Brad attacks, I'm going to use the Universal Reaction counter instead of Tough Nut. I'm hoping here that if he doesn't kill me, he dies and isn't able to do a second attack. Okay, rolling. This is completely for the game, Victor. Yeah, it is. Can I roll one by one? Sure. I'm going to roll one by one. So I need one six or two fives. Okay, I'm dead <laughs> no matter what. No. Oh, how many do you have left? Three. Bro. <laughs> this is not a six. I lost. Oh, I lost the game. Oh my God. Brutal. That was a close game. That was really uh, close. I can't do anything here. So this guy's dead. Victor just moves away into hiding. I can't get to this guy. And then all my other fighters that I have left, they're literally out of range to do anything useful. Yeah. So Victor wins. He broke two groups, I broke one. What a great game. Uh, honestly, everything I love about Warcry. Any game that goes into the last turn 
and uh, is decided on whether or not you can roll a six. Yeah. Love it. It was a really, really, really close game. Honestly, came down to like a single, if I got a single six yeah. in that last five dice or two fives. It's a tie. It's a tie. Yeah. It was really close. That was really fun. That was great. It was fun to get a monster in the mix too. Totally. Because of how powerful the monster hunting abilities are, it doesn't feel overtuned to me. Like it doesn't feel uh, like I was just able to run away with it because of him. You know, like yeah. you had you had really good tools to nerf him early. Yeah, totally. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we got more big, grandiose plans for Warcry yeah, coming definitely. at some point, <laughs> but um, yeah, we're really happy to get back in the Warcry game and really happy to see a new warband on the table. I, I really like this team that you've painted up, Victor. Yeah, thanks. It was fun and uh, always nice to see the so much blood everywhere team. Yeah. For this video, I think that's all we've got to say. So once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. See ya.